So now we'll get into wet bulb globe temp. This is similar to the heat index, but it's a little bit more all encompassing to fully evaluate stress on people. So the heat index does use temp and humidity, but it doesn't really use anything more than that. And the wet bulb globe temp uses stuff like cloud cover. So it will feel hotter in the sun than in the shade wind. It'll feel hotter when there's less wind to kind of blow air around and then stuff like sun angle. So this was initially developed by the military, but now a lot of the time schools use it for like kids playing outside or sports for athletes. So it's definitely something that's used a bit more and is a bit more useful if you can find vendors that use it, or, you know, you could even calculate it yourself. It is separated into three different zones. So there are acclimation zones. So places like the Southeast, even if you have near normal or as is likely to happen, maybe even slightly above normal in places like North Carolina, Tennessee, it still is just quite hot just because it gets so humid. And anytime you have a southerly wind, you're bringing in a ton of moisture from the Gulf. So that's definitely something to note. And then by the time you get into places like, you know, upper Midwest, the Rockies, it's just not as humid over there. So you're in a category one as opposed to a category three, which is definitely a lot more oppressive. So in terms of wet bulb globe temp, as I was saying before, I would say places that have the highest risk for legitimately oppressive heat are places where you have warmer than average weather and wetter than average weather, you know, coinciding with each other. And it seems like based on what we were looking at, once you get into places like the Northern mid Atlantic, the Northeast, uh, parts of the Ohio Valley, that's where you can get legitimately like truly muggy weather 